The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, I'm Karen and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. The 555 timer is this awesome little chip that lets you do some really cool stuff without the expense of a microcontroller or needing to know how to program. One way to use the 555 timer is in a stable mode, also known as a one-shot timer. In a stable mode, a 555 timer can be triggered by one signal, which will cause its output to go high for a period of time and then automatically return to outputting low. Each single shot or activation of the trigger causes the output to go high. To understand how to use a 555 timer in monostable mode, we first need to understand how a 555 timer works. The 555 timer has eight pins. Pins one and eight are used to power the chip. Pin three is the output. To use the 555 in monostable mode, we need to pay attention to three pins. Pins two, six, and seven. Pin two, trigger, is used to set the output of the 555 timer high. Pin six, threshold, is used to reset the output back to low. Pin seven, discharge, is internally connected to the output state and is the key to the one-shot function. Let's start with pins two and six. Each of these pins is connected to a comparator. A comparator is a device that has two inputs. Of the two, if the positive input has a higher voltage, the comparator will output high. If the negative input has a higher voltage, the comparator will output low. Each comparator is connected to a voltage divider made up of resistors that connects the power and ground pins of the 555. The positive input of comparator one is connected and has a voltage one third of the supply voltage, one third VCC. With comparator two, the negative input is connected and has a voltage two thirds of the supply voltage, two thirds VCC. The comparator outputs are both connected as the inputs of a flip-flop. A flip-flop normally has two outputs, Q and not Q. They are inverse of each other. When Q is high, not Q is low. When Q is low, not Q is high. A high signal at the set input causes Q to output high and not Q the inverse. A high signal at the reset input causes Q to output low and not Q the inverse. In the 555 timer, the flip-flop output not Q is used, but it is connected to the 555 output with an inverter. So the 555 output signal is basically the same as output Q of the flip-flop, the inverse of not Q. For the 555 output to go high, set needs to have a high signal. So for comparator one to output high, the positive input needs to have a higher voltage than the negative input. Let's talk about how we can build a circuit to selectively set comparator one's output. We would want pin two to have a voltage higher than one third VCC so that comparator one typically outputs low. We can do this by connecting pin two to VCC with a resistor. Then to make comparator one output high, pin two needs to have a voltage lower than one third VCC. So we connect pin two to ground with a button. By default, pin two is pulled high to VCC through the resistor. When the button is pressed, pin two is pulled low to ground, making the positive input have a larger voltage than the negative input and comparator one outputs high. When the button is released, pin two connects back to VCC and comparator one outputs low. However, this doesn't cause a change in the flip-flop or output. Comparator one can only set the output high. We want to be able to reset the output back to low. To do that, we need to look at comparator two. Comparator one outputting high sets the 555 output high, but comparator two outputting high resets the 555 output back to low. Comparator two's negative input connects to the voltage divider where it is supplied two thirds VCC. So if we connect pin six to ground with a resistor, the positive input will have a higher voltage and comparator two will output low. But to reset the 555 output low, Comparator two needs to output high. This is where we get into how monostable mode really works. The button at pin two triggers the 555 output to go high. But in monostable mode, the output automatically resets back to low after a certain period of time. To make this happen, 
We need the discharge pin. Pin 7 on the 555 timer is the discharge pin. Inside the 555, the discharge pin is connected to an NPN transistor. The transistor connects discharge pin 7 at the collector to ground through the emitter. The base of the transistor connects to the output of the flip-flop. You'll notice it connects before the inverter, so the signal it gets is the inverse of the 555 output. So when the 555 outputs high, the flip-flop is outputting a low signal, so the transistor is off. But when the 555 output is low, the flip-flop outputs high, turning on the transistor, connecting pin 7 to ground. This is useful when we add a capacitor to the circuit. To review, when a capacitor is connected to a voltage, it charges up and can reach a voltage equal to that of the supply. And when disconnected from the supply, it will hold that voltage, like a battery, until it is connected to a path that allows it to discharge, draining the charge. For more on how capacitors work, check out my other video. You can find the link in the description below. Back to the circuit. Pin 6 is connected to VCC through a resistor, and to ground with a capacitor, then also connected to pin 7. The capacitor can connect to VCC to charge up or can discharge to ground through the transistor by connecting to pin 7. Let's take a look at how this works with the entire circuit. Here I've added an LED to the output to show when the 555 is high, on, or low, off. As long as the capacitor has no charge, when the circuit is connected to power, the output will be off. The negative inputs of both comparators have a larger voltage, so they both output low. The flip-flop outputs high, so the transistor is open, connecting the capacitor to ground through the discharge pin. When the button is pressed, pin 2 is pulled low to ground and comparator 1 outputs high, setting the flip-flop. The 555 outputs high even after the button is released. The transistor has been turned off, disconnecting the capacitor from ground, so it connects to VCC and charges up. Once the capacitor has a charge higher than two-thirds VCC, the positive input takes priority and comparator 2 outputs high. At this moment, a lot of things happen. The flip-flop outputs high, turning on the transistor and causing the 555 to output low, turning off the LED. With the transistor on, the capacitor is reconnected to ground, allowing it to discharge back down to zero. The 555 will stay in this one stable state until the button is pressed again. This monostable mode is referred to as a one-shot timer since you get one high output burst for each shot or button press. The capacitor doesn't have to discharge completely before pressing the button again, but it will affect the time the 555 timer outputs high. The time it takes for the capacitor to charge up and reset the circuit can be controlled by changing the values of the resistor and capacitor connected to pin 6. Here's the equation for calculating time. The time that the 555 will output high equals 1.1 times the capacitance in farads times the resistance in ohms. For example, when using a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor, the timer will last about one second. Using a 1000 microfarad capacitor and a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, the timer will last for about five seconds. Here's the 555 monostable circuit hooked up on a breadboard. The power supply is supplying nine volts. Pin one is connected to ground and eight to VCC. Pin two is connected to VCC with a resistor and to ground through this button. Pin three, the output, has the LED with its current limiting resistor. Pin six and seven are tied together, connecting to ground through this 100 microfarad capacitor and I'm using my resistance substitution box to tie the pins to VCC so I can easily adjust the value. With the 100 microfarad capacitor and 10 kilo ohm resistor, when I push the button, the output stays on for about a second. At 22 kilo ohms, it lasts maybe twice as long. At 33 kilo ohms, A little bit longer than that. If I choose a lower value, it barely stays on. 4700 ohms, 3300 ohms. Wow. Even shorter. Barely on. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. A lot of times people say 
Great lesson, Karen, but what's a practical application for this? Well, I'm gonna leave that to you. Tell me how you would use this circuit in a project. Help educate your fellow viewers. Post your comments and ideas on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. You can also find more videos and information about 555 timers. Look for links in the description below. Happy learning.